The title of this solo podcast is The Prison of Need. You know, I think the f- most essential thing to understand, um, and if you get nothing else out of this solo podcast, this would perhaps be the most resounding message that if you walked away with, uh, it perhaps might benefit you. And that would be that whatever I'm about to say, uh, the idea of trying to live up to it, or the idea of trying to achieve it, or the idea of thinking that this must be done because it's good for you and because it's healthy and because it's correct and it's proper and it's spiritual, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a very significant mistake. Because the things that I talk about, you know, these are not things like, you know, shining your shoes or, you know, combing your hair in a particular way or, you know, five different ways to make your skin cleaner. I mean, these are, these are deep, um, deep-seated emotional and fundamental issues within human beings. Uh, they are, they are uh, well, well beyond the realm and the grasp of uh, prescription. There is no, there isn't, there isn't any way in the world that any human being alive could prescribe his way to, to such things, such as ridding himself or herself of need. Uh, any attempt to rid oneself of need or attachment is uh, is an utter failure from the very beginning because it is uh, it's an attempt to adhere to an idea and human beings only do things sincerely when they have no other choice and they arrive at having no other choice when the pain and the disappointment and the misery uh, of continuing on in the same way is simply no longer sustainable. Human beings have an enormous capacity for pain, an enormous uh, threshold for misery. Uh, But when for a given person that threshold is reached and it can no longer be tolerated, it is only then that someone becomes a true candidate uh, to walk this path. Uh, Anything short of that is one trying to live up to some notion that is good for him, and that will fail. That'll fail before you walk out the door, Um, because it's just something like need is so deep within human beings. A, A person needs his spouse to love him. He needs his children to revere and respect him. He needs to be loved by his children. He needs to be uh, told that he's doing a good job. He needs the adoration of his friends. He needs the companionship of various different people. Uh, He needs uh, the validation of the world. Uh, the the needs spread so far and so wide, you know, they span the earth 16 times. Uh, how in the world would you begin to prescribe your way out of that? I mean, that's just, it's beyond unserious. Um, you know, the, the web of need is so intricate. The the complexity and the tentacles of attachment uh, run so deep within the human being um, that it it makes him a complete prisoner. And even as I say that, um, uh, don't agree with me because... What will happen is that your mind will say, you know, what he's saying is right. It does make me a prisoner. It makes me sad. It makes me sorrowful. Uh, It leads to disappointment and pain and anxiety and stress. 
So uh, that's right, it does, and I really need to get away from this attachment. You'll fail. That isn't that isn't powerful enough. Intellectual understanding isn't powerful enough. Say a situational attempt to flee uh, isn't powerful enough. It's only when you hit a brick wall, and the realization that behind that brick wall are an endless row of brick walls, then there's a chance. So forget about the idea of trying to get away from need or to. Um, overcome and dismantle all your attachments. Forget about achieving those things. Uh, it's it, it. If something benefits you or doesn't benefit you, whatever chances of that there are, it will only arise by um, by listening with a genuine ear and not listening in order to follow. Because I'm not telling you to do anything, so there's nothing to follow. Uh, but understand, um, not with, understand not so that you may do, uh, but so that you may understand. You know, the, how many needs does a person have? Uh, in, in every compartment of his life, from his professional life to his personal life, there are an endless array of needs. Uh, he needs to become a success. He needs to make more money. He needs, uh, w when he goes to the grocery store, he needs the clerk to respond kindly to him. Uh, there are s these things are so deep, um, and there are so many. And don't for a second think that you're right. I should not need the clerk to be happy with me. You know, th let's just forget about all of those things. Never, never believe that the opposite of what I'm saying is the truth. The opposite of what I'm saying will lead you to the same hell as what I'm saying itself. Um, you know, imagine, imagine for a second, uh, not with any attempt or hope of arriving there, just imagine for a second that you had no need. You did not need your family to love you. You did not need your children to look up to you or respect you or listen to you. You did not need to become a success. You did not need to become validated. You did not need for your friend to return your text message or your phone call. You did not need your, your boss to compliment you. You did not need to look handsome or pretty. You did not need to be considered cultured or fashionable. Imagine that if you had absolutely no needs, um, where you would be, what that would, what kind of life that would be. Um, and I and I must say right from the start that uh, there. You know, this world is filled with people who give reflexive responses, who who do not have the bandwidth to listen to anything without letting their mouth run wild with statements like, well, if I had no need, then why would I be here if I had no need? And blah, blah, blah. You know, for those people, they need to just shut up and leave. Um, this is not for them. This will never be for them. So don't waste my time or yours and just leave. I'm not interested in your comments. So this is for the people who truly want, who are truly interested in silently, quietly allowing these words to seep into them to see if they find a home or if there's natural uh, aversion to them um, without any response whatsoever. Any response is a false response. And the quicker the response comes, the more of a fool the person is who's responding. Uh, so. Imagine for a second that if a person had no need, how freely that person would move in this world. Uh, imagine that you, you're, you did not need your child to look up to you. Imagine. That is ultimate freedom. Um, now, what would be the mistakes? What would be, what would be the holes? What would be the natural questions that arise? What would be the holes in the understanding of this? What, what would it mean to misunderstand? Well, what it would mean to misunderstand would be that if one viewed this as someone who was uh, completely 
unfeeling and did not register anything that was going on around him. And that simply wouldn't be the case. In fact, if a person has no need, then that person is available to every single person in his life. A person who has no need is not a burden. And human beings are constant burdens to each other. And the greatest burden is the weight of need. But if you know someone or knew someone or imagined that you knew someone who needed nothing from you, now that's easy to say for someone who is a stranger, but imagine if it was a family member or a friend or someone close to you who needed nothing from you, who didn't need a thank you or an apology or not even a, 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 a pleasant gesture, that person would be a person that you would naturally gravitate towards. Now, you gravitating towards that person wouldn't be that person's intent. He wouldn't care less. But being free of need isn't about making others peaceful in your presence. That's just a natural side effect. Being free of need, first and foremost, is to escape the imprisonment that need produces. And don't try to escape the imprisonment uh, because you'll fail. But it is, it is just the ultimate utopia to live a life without need. Now, why, why is it, or in what way would such a thing even be possible? Well, it would even it would become possible when someone recognizes that this world can give no one anything. This world can give someone temporary pleasures. It does have that ability. But those temporary pleasures are temporary. And therefore, they need to be replenished. So this world cannot give anything to anyone of any lasting value. No human being can give anything to any other human being of any lasting value. That, and, and it's very important that you don't listen to what I just said, um, because if you do, it'll be intellectual. It's, you, you have to uh, marry that with your own experiences, uh, experiences of your own life, that must be seen in retrospect uh, with objectivity and deep analysis and nuance and sensitivity. Uh, don't ever buy or believe what I say. When someone realizes that need leads to a brick wall, it leads to attachment, and it leads an attachment leads to pain and conflict, and anxiety, and fear, uh, and that most importantly of all, that it simply cannot lead anywhere else but those places. You see, if there's, if there's a chance that need could lead to freedom, then it would be logical for human beings to entertain need, since there was a possibility that it could lead to freedom, even though the odds were very heavily stacked against that. But if there is zero chance that need can lead to freedom, then that might make a person consider uh, and examine. Uh, so once again, I'm not trying to talk you into it. In fact, I'm trying to talk you out of it, if anything. Uh, I'm trying to talk you out of the idea of trying to get over need and attachment. But if you had no need in your life, you would move you would move completely free in this world. Nothing would affect you. Everything would be greeted with a smile and not a prescriptive smile, not a fake and false body language that is being taught to you as a 
reactive and defensive cosmetic attempt to pretend as if you are not being affected. But naturally, when you need nothing, you have everything. Good night.